What's up everybody and welcome to part 9 of my basics of deep learning series. In the previous three videos we have answered the second question here, which was how do you determine the right parameters for the algorithm? And for the deep learning algorithm, the parameters are the weights, which are represented by uh, those lines here. So determining the right parameters now means that we want to find such weights that the neural net is able to make correct predictions. And therefore, uh, we introduced the mean squared error as our cost function, because with that we could measure in a precise and concrete way how good the neural net actually is at making uh, decisions or predictions. So our goal then was to, to find such weights that this mean squared error uh, would be minimized. And therefore, we introduced the gradient descent algorithm and here the most important aspect uh, was this partial derivative. The partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to a particular weight matrix. Uh, weight matrix. And what this tells us is how uh, the mean squared error changes if we slightly increase that particular uh, weight matrix. And based on that information then, we update uh, this matrix and thereby we would be able to reduce somewhat the mean squared error. And if we do that for all of our weight matrices simultaneously, and then do also many of those gradient descent steps, then we could find an approximation for the minimum of this function here. So in our case then, uh, we have two weight matrices. So we have to determine uh, those two partial derivatives. The partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight matrix one. So this one and with respect to weight matrix two. So that one. And uh, to calculate those partial derivatives, we could make use of uh, the chain rule. And that's because during the feed forward, we're always putting the result of one step into uh, the next one. So if we apply the chain rule to those two, uh, those two partial derivatives, then uh, the formulas look like this. And here we then had to make a slight uh, adjustment to our feed forward algorithm because the step function here is actually not differentiable. So we couldn't uh, calculate this partial derivative and that one. So that's why we replaced uh, the step function with the sigmoid function as our uh, activation function. So uh, those three, or well, this is now how we can uh, determine those two partial derivatives. And those three uh, elements taken together, they are what make up the backpropagation algorithm. So whereas the functions of the feed forward algorithm, they represent uh, the movement forward through the neural net. Those functions here, they represent the movement backwards through the uh, neural net. And that's why I like uh, such a diagram of the neural net as a reference, because here you can basically see all the things or all the calculations that you have to do uh, in order to do the feed forward and back propagation algorithm, which might be uh, or might seem complicated or hard to remember if you just look at these formulas alone. Okay, so now we want to see uh, how we can how we can actually determine or calculate those two partial derivatives, because with that knowledge, then we can then implement the backpropagation algorithm in code. And uh, but the problem uh, with that is that here, as you can see, uh, we are or we are always having here capital letters, which means that we are dealing with matrices. So accordingly, we also have to determine the partial derivative with respect uh, to a matrix, not just a, a regular scalar variable, which we have done in the previous videos. So because of that, uh, to determine those two partial derivatives, we have to make use of something called matrix calculus. And because that's something that you don't uh, normally learn in school, and it's also quite complicated because you have to handle uh, many uh, components all at once. Uh, because of that, 
now we're going to take uh, we're going to take a step back and represent those equations here using scalar variables so variables that actually just represent a single uh, single number and what we're going to do then is instead of determining for example the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight matrix 2 instead what we're going to do is to determine the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to all the weights in weight matrix 2 so with respect to this weight that weight this weight and so on and that way uh, even without matrix calculus we can then understand what's going on in these formulas and then what's once we are done with that we can then transfer back that knowledge uh, back to dealing with those matrices because when we then actually want to implement the back propagation in code we can then take advantage of the speed of numpy okay so that's uh, what we're going to do now so let's now rewrite those equations here using scalar variables so here are those uh, those equations and since the neural net is depicted in this upright representation let's uh, switch up the order of those uh, formulas so that they match the operations of the neural net and now uh, we are only uh, interested in this part of the neural net so we just want to know uh, how we can determine the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weights in weight matrix 2 and not 1. So we don't have to focus on these uh, equations for now so uh, and because of that uh, we're going to treat h out as given and not as a variable. So uh, let's now remove those equations and then we have more space and now those are the equations that we are, uh, that we want to represent with scalar notation. So therefore, now to uh, determine the input of this node here, which we are going to call O in one. Uh, to determine that, we are going to multiply the output of this node, which we're going to call call H out one, with uh, this particular weight. So the weight that goes from node one to node one and here uh, this two uh, is just my way of representing that this weight belongs to weight matrix two so it's the weight that goes from uh, node one to node one of weight matrix two and not the weight that goes from node one to node one of weight matrix one so now uh, to this expression now we add h out times the weight uh, that goes to from node 2 to node 1 so the output of this node times that weight and that's then our O in 1 so the input of uh, the income value of this output node here in a similar way we can then determine the inputs of those two nodes and then in the next step uh, to determine the output of these nodes which we're going to call O out one, two, and three, we simply put the respective O ints into the sigmoid function. And this now uh, are the equations that represent just uh, the calculations for just one example. So if you want to consider two examples, then you have to do those calculations again. And here then, to distinguish those, I use this superscript. So here, for example, to calculate O in 3 of example 2, we have to make use of uh, H out 1 and 2 of example 2, but uh, the weights, they stay the same. So you could, for example, imagine that uh, to calculate all these outputs, you have to run the this neural net here twice. And then, uh, now let's make a little uh, side note and let's uh, look again at this matrix multiplication here and let's see if we are actually calculating the same thing as we do with this in this scalar notation so first this h out matrix here is going to be a two by two matrix because we have two examples 
and two nodes in the hidden layer. Uh, this weight matrix two is gonna be a two by three matrix because we have, or well, the weights go from two nodes to three. And then if you multiply this matrix with that, then the result of that will be a two by three matrix. Because again, we have two examples and here there are three nodes in the output layer. So now, uh, if we want to calculate O in one of example one, so this one, then we are, what we're going to do is to calculate dot product of this row and that column. So we multiply uh, H out one with weight one one, and to that we add H out two times weight two one. And that's exactly what we're doing here in this calculation. And the same logic applies to all those other O ins. So as you can see, uh, this calculation here is exactly the same as the calculations here. We're just using uh, different notations. Okay, so now uh, to determine the mean squared error, we are putting all those O outs into this equation. And for this general case, then it looks like this, where we have O out of node N and example E. And then we also have the uh, respective Y, so the respective label. And if we write out this sigma here that runs over all the nodes N, so over all these nodes here, then the function looks like this. So we have O out one, two, and three. And then if we also write out this sigma here that runs over all the examples E, then the function finally looks like this. And here as a side note, I want to mention that if you would actually calculate the mean squared error, then it's actually just a regular number and not a matrix, which, which you might think be, uh, because we are only, uh, we are using here again, uh, capital letters. But uh, here in this case, I use capital letters because this is supposed to be an abbreviation and using uh, lowercase letters looked kind of strange. So even though we are also using capital letters like we do with the matrices, keep in mind that this is just a scalar variable. And one way to remember that maybe is that you notice that these matrices, they are always just denoted with one uh, letter, whereas this abbreviation here has several. Okay, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. And now, uh, this is uh, the equation for which we want to determine the partial derivative of with respect to all the weights in weight matrix two. And just to uh, repeat, we want to do that because those are all the weights of weight matrix two. And if we know how to determine those partial derivatives, then we should be able to transfer that knowledge over to uh, this partial derivative with respect to weight matrix two. And then thereby we can then, when we want to implement uh, the backpropagation algorithm code, then uh, take advantage of the speed of NumPy. Okay, so now let's first determine uh, the partial derivative of the mean squared hour with respect to weight one one. Therefore, we can again make use of the chain rule because we are always putting the result of one step into the next one. But since there are uh, several variables in this function here, we have to make use of a special case of the uh, of the chain rule, which is the multivariable chain rule. And this is defined as follows. So if you have function z that is dependent on x and y, and those x and y in turn are also dependent on variables, in this case u and v, then you can calculate the partial derivative of z with respect to u uh, in this way. So you can uh, multiply the partial derivative of z with respect to x with the partial derivative of x with respect to u. And to that then you add the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to u. And in a similar way, you can determine the partial derivative of z with respect to v. And an easy way to remember this rule and to work with it is to represent 
those equations here using or with a tree diagram. So as you can see, Z is dependent on X and Y, and X and Y in turn are dependent on U and V. So if you want to determine the partial derivative of Z with respect to U, then you have to consider those two paths. So to calculate it, then you would calculate, uh, multiply the partial derivative of Z with respect to X, with the partial derivative of X with respect to U, and then you add this other path. And in intuitively, it makes sense that you would do those calculations because what you want to know if you want to, for example, determine this partial derivative is how does Z change if you slightly increase U. And since U affects Z over those two paths here, it makes sense that you have to add them together. So that's how the multivariable chain rule works. And let's now apply it to our function here. So let's also create uh, such a tree diagram. Uh, and in the first step, as you can see, the mean squared error is dependent on O out 1, 2, and 3 of example 1 and 2. And then in the next step, those O outs are dependent on their respective O ins. And then uh, for the uh, final step, uh, this O in of example 1 and 2 is dependent on weight 1, 1 and weight 2, 1. And that's because, as said earlier, right now we are only interested in this part of the neural net. So we're going to treat those H outs as given. So we can change them by changing our weights and weight matrix 1 for now. Okay, so then in a similar way, you can determine those other steps. So O in 2 is dependent on weight 1, 2, and 2, 2, and O in 3 is dependent on weight 1, 3, and 2, 3. So uh, this tree now represents those equations here, and now to determine the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight 1, 1, we have to consider those two paths. So to calculate this partial derivative, we have to multiply the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to O out 1. This we multiply with the, partial, uh, with the derivative of O out with respect to O in 1. And here we are again using the regular derivative because O out 1 or the O out 1s in general, they depend only on one variable. So that's why we're using the regular derivative. And then finally, we are multiplying these two expressions with the partial derivative of O in with respect to weight 1, 1. And to that then we add the second path here. And that's now how, how you can calculate the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight 1, 1 of weight matrix 2. So now in the next step, let's see what those individual expressions actually look like. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.